I'm prospecting a beach at high tide in the middle of the day. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. Today I've come down to a different beach and my whole purpose is to find the fish. So I'm going to work my way along the beach and locate where the fish are and take you with me and teach you everything that I'm doing while I'm fishing. If you're enjoying these videos, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell because it really helps my channel and I appreciate it so much. Let's get started. So I'm going to start off using the um, classic beach worms that I use a lot. Um, they really are a fantastic bait. And I'm going to use a two hook rig. And I'm going to just start to work my way along the beach, picking different little pockets of water. And I'll talk about it as I'm doing it. In an in a effort really to locate where some nice fish are. I really enjoy that. I think it's fun. It's exciting. You come down and you, you can suss out the, you know, the structure and what's on the beach. It's a lot like hunting. You know, you're kind of um, using your, all of your senses and your stealth to look at the conditions and work out where you think fish could be and then test it all out. And it's great when you actually have, get the results that you're looking for. Sometimes, you know, you'll find no fish in one spot, but then you'll locate a part of the beach where the fish are really, really biting. So that's really what I'm wanting to do is locate the fish. So this will be my first cast. It's high tide, so there are some nice pockets of reasonably deep water close to the shore. I expect that with the worms, my most likely culprits would be brim whiting and salmon. I expect. So at the moment in front of me, I've got waves breaking out the back onto a sandbar. There's a lot of white water, but there's just a little green trough in the edge. So I'm going to flick my line just into this little area on the inside of all those broken waves. Oops, I caught a seaweed. Okay, I'm just going to, I won't need to cast out very far in this particular case. Just a little flick, really. So I've just lobbed that out, just a short little flick. My main criteria is that there's enough depth of water. I like to, as you know, I like to fish the edges of the white water and the green water. And so I'm going to just give this little spot here a go for five or 10 minutes. I'll have a couple of casts. If I don't get any bites, I'm gonna move along to the next spot and just have fun working my way along the beach. Of course, if I get lots of bites here, I, I might not get much further, but just wait and see. As I look along the beach, I can see some reasonably good water. This, because the tide's high, we do have a bit of depth close to shore. If it was low tide at the moment, this would all be really, it'd be super shallow. And I don't know that it would be that much good. Yeah, I've got a fish. Okay, so this is first cast. Let's see what it is. It's not big, oh, it's a little flathead. That's not what we want. We've got to let him grow into a big one. Now, these have got spikes on them. I've got to be really careful. So I'm just going to put a bit of pressure on here so that I can get this hook out. And I don't want him to, I don't want to have my hands near the sides of his head because these guys have got spikes on each side of the head. So I'm going to carefully grab this guy um, and try and flick him out into the water, actually. I'm just going to use my foot because, oh, one flick, <laughs> he'll get out on the next wave, there he goes, he's keen, that next little bit of water, that'll get him, I can see a bit of weed out in the water, not much, but it's a few chunks of weed. So. 
Hopefully we don't get caught in that weed. Okay, plop. Okay, so that was just a little fish, not worth eating or anything. So I think I'll give this place two more casts. I just put one in close to shore just then. And I might put one in a little bit further out. I think I felt a little tap tap then. It hasn't come back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got a fish. Yep. There you go. I had a bite. Well, this is pretty good, isn't it? I mean, middle of the day. This is fighting like a brim. Middle of the day, two casts, two fish. Just going to wait for this little wave. Bring him in with the wave. Yep, it's a brim. I'm just going to grab him. Okay, so... There you go. Nice little beach brim. Looks like something's had a, had a go at him at some stage. He's been bitten by something. Just here, just in front of his first dorsal fin there, you can see there's a depression. So at some point in his life, he's been bitten by something bigger. Now these are beautiful to eat, Brim. Really sweet, delicious, fantastic. Actually, really good in fish tacos. Have you ever had a fish taco? I'm gonna do a video very soon. I'm gonna do a catch and cook and make fish tacos on the beach. So, I'm gonna put this guy in the keeper. Well, that's two casts. Already having some fun. A small flathead and a brim. So I'm loading plenty of worms onto this hook. And because I just caught a brim, I'm gonna chuck this out in the same spot that I just had that bite. Just gonna flick it out in about the same sort of area. Just a little lob. Yeah, that's about where it landed last time. Now, if you can see the water where I'm fishing just here, I would estimate the depth of the water just here in this kind of a greeny patch in front of the sandbar only to be, I reckon it'd be about five feet deep. So not that deep. I mean, that depth of water is really good for fish like whiting and brim. Generally speaking, if you want to catch salmon, you need a slightly deeper gutter that is more open to the, um, throughout the back. So I've got one brim there. Let's just see how long it takes to get another bite. I was going to move on if I didn't get any bites, but I've had some bites. So hang on, I'm getting a bite now. Just felt something. Just going to wait. It's strange when fish just have a little couple of bites and then they don't come back. It's good when you have actually have two baits. Because if you have two baits on your line and you do get a bite, you know that you've most likely still got some bait out there because you've got two baits and not one. Whereas if you had a couple of bites and you've only got one bait, you might think, well, they might have taken it. But because I've got two baits, I'm gonna wait. I'm kind of trigger happy at the moment. It's like I'm amped, waiting for a bite. Just got a little bit of weed on the end of my line. Just gonna take that off and pop it out again. I'm going to cast out a little bit further this time, just mix it up a little bit. A lot of people ask me about my water shoes that I wear when I'm fishing, which I currently have on at the moment. There is a link on my website, rogersfishing.com, that you, if you go to the resources page, It'll have a link where you can get these shoes. I don't normally wear shoes on the beach. I wear them on the rocks a lot. But a lot of the places I go fishing off the beach, I need to walk along a, a track that's got rocks and sticks and sharp things 
So I end up just leaving my shoes on when I get down to the beach. As far as water shoes go, they are a little expensive. However, I've been wearing these particular ones for about three years. And it, it feels like they're brand new. They've, they haven't worn at all. But other than that, they're actually made out of a really, the rubber is not rigid and sharp. It actually is quite soft on your feet. They're really comfortable. And I think I'm gonna be wearing these, I don't know, for the next 20 years. I really like them. For those reasons, they're, they're a great shoe and they're nice on your feet. They don't scratch you or rub you. I'm telling you about these shoes because I've had so many comments, hundreds of comments about the shoes. And I'm not actually selling them. I don't get paid for them. However, if you do buy them through my website, I get a really small commission, which is always helpful. Oh, I just had a bite. That bit quite suddenly, that fish. I was standing here holding my line and it just went whack. It's not very far out from shore actually. Just here. Oh. It hit it really hard, but it's a small whiting. He's undersized this guy, but man, he bit hard for a little fish. So you can look at him, he's beautiful. For those of you who don't live in Australia, this is what we call a sand whiting. In New South Wales, where I live, the legal size limit for these is 27 centimetres. This guy would be about, about 24, something like that. These are so good to eat. The flesh on whiting is really clean white flesh. It's very delicate. It's a delicious fish. Well, I'm going to go and grab a bit more bait. So I'm going to toss this one out a little bit further and on a bit of an angle over that way. Nice looking water. What a great way to spend an afternoon. Really good for your mental health and physical health. Here, one of the, I was thinking yesterday, you know, there's lots of different sports and things that we can do, which are, which are wonderful. But with fishing, you know, you obviously invest a bit of money into fishing gear and different things. But you're doing something healthy and at the same time you're actually catching beautiful food. Which is a real bonus. I chose this particular beach today because it's a big beach. I would say it's probably, well at least five kilometres long. And I thought it would be a good beach that I could actually just enjoy myself and just work my way along the beach. So that's the reason I chose this particular spot. And I thought it would be good to come down at high tide, even though it's the middle of the day. Um, I thought it would be a good time to fish. I'm just gonna literally plop this in right on the edge just for a couple of seconds, just to see if anything's right on the edge. Yeah. That's just right off where the water drops off on the edge. I'm just over the edge, just to see if I'm gonna get a bite there. When I caught that little whiting before, it was right on the edge. So fish often swim up along, up, up and down along the edge of that drop off. I just had a couple of nibbles right on the edge. It feels like one of those small whiting. Let's see if it comes back. I'm hoping that big daddy whiting comes along. Yeah, I'm getting a couple of bites. Whoa, that was a bit of a wild strike, but I, I didn't hook up. But you know, that's interesting. Both of my baits are gone. I had a bait on this top bait and the bottom bait and they both, both got nicked. Well, I think I'm gonna move along to another spot. I've been fishing here for about 15, 20 minutes. I've caught three fish one which I've kept, um, but I think I'm going to uh, try another little spot, see what happens. Just going to walk about, about 100 metres along the beach. I can see a nice gutter, a nice trough over there. So I'm just going to walk along the beach a little bit, because that's the purpose of today, is to go searching for the fish. Okay, we're going to go to location number two.
I'm not planning on fishing right this next little spot because it's just a bit shallow. There's a lot of white water and turbulence just there, but I can see a nice deep patch a bit further up. And this particular spot just here is quite a bit different to that first place that I fished. It was a lot shallower over there. I think I'm much more likely to catch a salmon here because it's deeper and it's definitely open to out the back beyond the waves. So it'll be interesting to see what I catch. I'm gonna chuck two lines out here. I'm gonna put this one out that I was just holding with two baits in a holder and then just use a little flick rod close to the edge. So let's see what we catch. This spot here is definitely a lot deeper than where I was just fishing. How you can tell that is obviously this is all a sand bottom, but when the water is shallow, the color of the water is much paler and lighter in color. As it gets deeper, it gets a darker, richer color. So it's really just, you can tell, because the waves aren't breaking there as much, and it's just a much deeper color. It has a sandbar out the back as well, but it's way deeper. So I'm actually gonna try and cast this one out a little bit further. I think I'm a much better chance of catching a salmon here than where I was before but we'll just see how that goes. So I'm gonna leave this one set. I'm gonna go and grab my other little rod. Looks awesome, actually. Yeah, it looks, uh, you can get anything in here. Dolphins, sharks, all sorts of stuff would be out there. Not a problem. I'm just walking down close to the edge so I can just get a little bit further out and hopefully I won't get slammed by a wave. Cool, all right, well, we'll see how long it takes for this to get a bite. I'm just gonna grab my other rod and have a go with that. So now I just have my little flick rod that only has 10 pound line on it. And I've got a small star sinker with a, a bead in front of it, just above the swivel. And then about a 40 centimetre leader to a worm hook. And I'm going to go on the other side of this line because there's a little bit of drag going to the right. The reason for the bead is it protects the knot which is tied onto the swivel. It protects it from the sinker. So the sinker just doesn't whack up against the knot and potentially cause the knot to break or break the line. There's a bit more current in this spot because of all of that water. I'm not going to cast this one out very far, just to see how it goes, see what happens on the edge. I've only got one hook on this rod. I'm just going to come up this way a little bit, keep my eye on that rod. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a, a really different dynamic in this particular spot right here to just only 100 metres down the beach. That was a lot calmer, a lot quieter. But the waves are bigger here and there's a lot more water movement. It's worth having a go though. to see which way, where that current's going to end up and finish. So that's a good lesson. I've only come a little bit down the beach and it's completely different. And the current here is really strong. I fairly quickly got washed that way, even though I have a star sinker on. I'm just going to walk to the left a little bit and toss it upstream a bit and then maybe follow it. Okay, so in this particular spot, because I'm really tangling with a strong current, I'm not sure how long I'm going to stick here. It depends on if I catch any fish, what happens, but because there's so much depth of water here, the waves are really swirling out. I've got some beautiful worm baits on, so 
if there's anything swimming around and sees it, they're not going to be able to resist it. My other line just down the beach here, I reckon what's happened is it's been blown, it's been, the current has pushed it completely sideways. I wouldn't be surprised if that line is not just going straight down the beach. And also that's what's happened to this line as well. I cast out there, now I'm over there. I haven't had any bites. Actually, I think I've got a bit of weed or something. But I can see a little sandbar over to my left, relatively close to shore, with a little bit of deep water in front of it. So I think I might walk over there. Yeah, this is a weed fish, undoubtedly. There's a little sandbar just out here with a nice depression in front of it. It might take just a little bit of the edge off that current. So I'm going to have a cast out there. It looks good. I think by looking at it, it's not going to drift as much as just over there. But we'll just see what happens if it does hold its position any better. <laughs> Look at that. Went very close to my feet. Just put my other line in it had a dart on it. I've never eaten dart, but I've spoken to a few people, they reckon they're all right to eat. Although I don't need this guy, so. Unfortunately, he swallowed the hook. So I don't think he's going to survive. You don't seem to get any big dart around here. They're all little, tiny little things. So that second spot, I really only fished for about 10 minutes or so. The current was super strong. And when I've moved just a little bit, there's less current. So I'm going to give it a go here for a few minutes. But then I'm going to keep working my way down the beach. Because I can see some really interesting looking water down there. And I won't really know what it's like unless I actually walk down there and have a look. But hey, you know, it's good exercise. It keeps me young. And I want to keep fishing for a long time, so I don't mind the exercise. I'm having a couple of quick casts here because there's less current here. It just gives my bait a little bit longer to stay in, in a certain spot without getting dragged everywhere. And still got a good chance of catching a fish, so I'll leave that guy out there and then I'll grab my little rod. Looks like that current is dragging it to the right. But it should stay out in the zone for a little while, so it's still a good chance to catch fish. So really this is spot number three. First spot was actually so far the most pleasant. And even though two of the fish were too small, it was quite good for fishing in that spot. So I probably would have kept catching fish if I stayed there. But we're not finished yet. Plenty of time. Because this is such a big open beach, it cops most of the prevailing swell. It's just a really big open area where whatever ocean swell there is, you're going to get it here. Feels like a weed fish. One thing I've learned in this little session today is that where there was no little or no current, I got a lot of bites. As soon as I got into areas where there was a strong current, hardly any bites, virtually no bites at all. So I'm walking along the beach a bit further and my goal now is to try and find some water which has a nice little trough or reasonable depth 
where I can see that there's not going to be strong current. The way I can do that is it all depends on the on the configuration of, of the sandbar. If I can get enough relief from the outside surf and I've got a nice little depth of water which is parallel to the beach, I should have little or no current. So I'm just going to go about maybe another 150 metres along the beach, try and find a spot like that. Hopefully I can and fish there and then I will likely work my way back and have a fish at the first spot where I was getting the bites in the beginning. This spot here looks like there's likely to be less current than over there because there's a very defined parallel bank that runs right across the back with a bit of a trough in front of it. I can see some water movement moving that way because I can see some pieces of weed in the water and I'm watching the weed and I'm watching it as it moves just to see but it's just fairly slow so it should be much better here than just up there. It's been great to hear from some people in the US who said that they have certain types of worms in America that are similar to these. Now if you are from the US these worms grow to about eight feet in length. It'd be great to hear in the comments how long do the worms grow in America that you find on your beaches or potentially can use for bait. Do they grow as big as these ones? So I just use sections of worm, maybe three inches or eight centimetres long. I just feed it onto the hook and then just chop it off when I've got enough on the hook. The sun's come back out again. It was overcast nearly all morning, but the clouds look like they're clearing a bit. So let, let's see if this spot's a bit better. The water here is not overly deep, at, at most a couple of metres deep out there. I think that's a reasonable area to have a bait. So I'll sit this one in here and go and get my other rod so that way I've got couple of baits out there, give myself a, a good chance. We'll see how much drift there is here. What we want is less drift and more fish. Lovely day for a swim. So let's see what spot or location number four produces. We'll give it 15, 20 minutes. And then we've, I've probably, from where I initially started, I've probably walked at least a kilometre along this beach. And when I got here, which is just a bit over an hour ago, it was half an hour before high tide. So I've hit the top of the tide and now the tide's starting to go out. My line has gone slack. It hasn't drifted. It's possible that a fish has grabbed it and come in with it. That's what I'm hoping anyway. It's gone really quite slack. It's very unusual. I haven't got a fish, I can't feel anything. But that was strange. And it went to the left this time instead of to the right, so... Oh no, I've got something. I have a whiting. There you go, look at that. So that's why my line went slack and it came back in towards the shore. Well, I got another keeper. Fantastic. Starting to get... I've got a whiting and a brim now. Beautiful fish. My wife will be happy. Spot. 
Okay, X marks the spot. So the good thing about spot number four here is that there is no drift or very minimal. My line, this line when I chucked it out then, caught a whiting, but I really didn't drift at all. In fact, instead of getting swept way down to my right, the whiting took it to the opposite direction just a little bit. So that's promising. So I may fish here a little bit longer, see, because I've caught one fish first cast. So I think I'll probably fish here a little bit longer, see if I can add to my tally and then work my way back. It's quite warm out here, actually. Just watching my other rod. Is it a flathead? What is it, a whiting? Oh, it's a whiting, yes. Whiting number two, this one's just a little bit bigger. So this spot is producing, there's still a little bit of drift, not so much. I've got two nice whiting now, so I think I might have to stay here a little bit longer. <laughs> this whiting's a bit better size. He's probably about 31, 32 centimeters. He's a good fish, beautiful eating fish. Looks like I'll have enough food for several people, which will be good. Whoa. That's really nice just here. We just have a not a very deep parallel trough running along the edge, but there's definitely some whiting out there in that, so the water's really clear. My bait's been landing in the white water on the outer side of this trough. Right where the waves wash off the sandbar into the trough, I'm landing right on that far edge, which seems to be a good area. Put him in there. Swap over. Now this one has gone way down the beach. I don't think it's got a fish on it, but it's virtually on the sand, it's sideways. Oh, that's, I think that might be a bite. Yeah, something's going on. Something's going on out there. Just gonna hold it and wait. Nah, I don't think I've got anything. That was interesting, I was, I really held position then, I didn't drift at all. And uh, I was getting just some small taps. So yeah, I have lost my bottom bait and most of my top bait as well. So I think this one's going straight back out in the same spot. Look at this one. It's a really big fat worm that I got this morning. A little bit big for whiting. On the north coast, these are great bait for mulloway. They catch a lot of mulloway on worms on the New South Wales central coast. Seems to be a really good bait for them up there. Up around the uh, Port Macquarie area and Crescent Head, Hat Head, Southwest Rocks, all those places. I've done a bit of fishing up at Crescent Head and south of Crescent Head. I used to surf up there a lot. So, actually, I need to whack a bit more on the top bait. It doesn't quite have enough on it. Uh oh, I'm going to get hit. Oops. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> I was trying to protect my microphone because I knew that um, that wouldn't be good if the microphone got wet. I nearly fell over.
<laughs> I think that was a bit uncoordinated before <laughs> when I was in the water. I think you could call it unsynchronized fishing swimming. I just saw a big school of mullet in there, which is very healthy. That'll be food for some nice big fish. Yeah, there's a school of mullet out there. They're about 30 centimeters long. Yeah, I think it's got a fish on it. Hopefully this isn't a weed fish. Oh no, it's not a weed fish. Definitely not. I can feel it kicking. Come on. Come on, up, up you come. Woo! Oh, lovely whiting actually. Oh, two. <laughs> Double whammy. One that needs to go back and one really nice one. There you go, look at that, beautiful. Beautiful fish, whoa. They kick quite hard and they, their gill plates are quite sharp. They, they can get you. Alrighty. That's definitely a bite. Excellent. Feels like a good size whiting actually. Yep, let's bring him up. Oh, a reasonable size. Yep, look at that. So this is whiting number five for this spot. So spot number four is actually really producing. There's not too much drift and there's some lovely whiting. So I've learned a few things today. I'm always learning things when I go fishing. I love doing this sort of thing. I love just doing this where I walk along and try different things, look at different structure. It's a great way to improve your fishing skills. I'll just put this guy in my keeper bag and I'll chuck it out again. Well, this is turning into quite a productive afternoon. Certainly got, getting a lovely feed of whiting. And it's been well worth exploring. So I'll leave this guy out there. We'll see if there's one on there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, probably more whiting, I reckon. Cool. Have I got one fish or two? That's the question. Okay, how far out am I now? I think it's only one. Not that that's bad. Uh, not very big. Oh no, big enough. Yep. I can tell. There you go, a little whiting. I can tell by looking at him he's big enough. So the fillets of those are beautiful. So that's uh, whiting number six at this spot, I think. Which is really cool. So I think I'll keep fishing. Just get a couple more. There you go. I think I, I'm pretty sure I had some bites, but it's gone, it's drifted down to the right. Okay, what have we got? Yeah, there's a small fish on. Oh, hang on. No, not that small. He's all right. Another whiting, fantastic. They're coming in every cast now. And they love those worms. Yeah. 
So this spot is producing consistent whiting and undoubtedly they are feeding along the back edge of this trough where the white water washes into the trough. I'm casting my line right along the edge of the back. In front of me there's like a gutter or a, a depression and it's probably only about 40 metres to the other side of it and right where the waves wash over the edge is where the whiting are. I haven't cast in close because I keep getting fish out on that outer edge so obviously if I'm catching fish I'm just going to continue casting in the same spot. I'm casting this line out into the same zone as that bigger rod that's got two baits. I can still get the same distance with this light line. I think I'm getting a bite. Something's going on over here. Yeah, something's happening. Just gonna see what, what it feels like. Yeah, I think I've got something. What is this? Okay, brim this time. Well, that's another brim. I had one brim, so that's brim number two. Look at that, it's a beautiful fish. He's a similar size to the other one I caught. He's probably about 27 centimeters, but he'll be delicious, so. Lovely little surf brim. There may be a fish on my little line. I'm not sure if it's a fish or a weed or whatever. I've just been busy uh, taking the brim off. We'll see what's on this one. But the current has taken it right down the beach, so... I'm going to walk down here. I'm not going to drag it along. I'm just going to walk all the way down. Just easier. Where am I? I? Can't even see where the end of the line is. Oh, look at that. This brim's even bigger. <laughs> look at that guy. He has swallowed that worm bait. This has been an epic session. What a great spot this has been just here. I've landed about 10 fish in this spot, so that really is a great lesson. I fished, in, I fished the same beach and really the conditions varied a lot along this beach. There was areas where the current was just ridiculous, other areas where it was a bit calmer. I specifically walked all the way up here because I thought it looked like I could get out of the current and I've been able to, not totally but mostly, and it's resulted in about 10 beautiful fish. So a very successful session. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope you're learning things. Make sure that you like and subscribe, hit the notification bell and say hi in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.